Hello and welcome to the simple pooling tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna be using the pooler actions to set up a simple pooling system. So what is pooling exactly? Pooling is the better alternative to instantiating and destroying objects. And the reason that pooling is better than instantiating is because instantiating a totally new object takes a little longer than merely taking one that already exists and just turning it on and off. The goal with pooling is to get better frames per second. So typically in a game, you might have something like barrel spawner, and you might have this FSM on it that has a create object. And I'm just gonna use this barrel from Cinti's polygon prototype pack. So in our barrel spawner, I'm gonna drag and drop that in there. And the spawn point will just spawn at the barrel spawner. So let's put the barrel spawner right here in front of the player. And then we'll just have a wait action that waits three seconds before coming back around and looping and creating another barrel. And actually, we'll drag and drop this barrel in our scene, and we're gonna make our own by unpacking this prefab completely. I'm calling this, let's call that barrel. And we're gonna add an FSM to it, and we're just gonna add in a destroy self with a five second. Okay, so whenever these barrels come into the scene, They'll wait five seconds before destroying themselves. I'm just gonna drag and drop this barrel here in my pooler folder, and I'm gonna remove it from the scene. So our barrel spawner, I'll drag and drop this new version of the barrel in there instead. Okay, so when I hit play, okay, so it creates these barrels, but the barrels destroy themselves after five seconds. Now what's happening, destroying objects is fine for smaller projects and in rare instances, but while we're playing our game, I'm gonna come up to window, analysis and our profiler. I'm gonna pause the game and we're just gonna open this up and we'll see right now GC alloc. And what that means is garbage collecting allocation. Now right now it's not too big of a problem, but over time as the game destroys more and more objects, this garbage collection is going to grow into something that can really slow down the performance of the game. That's why one of the reasons programmers use pooling. And what pooling does, if I just stop this, is instead of creating the object, a brand new one every single time, and then destroying it, pooling will pull from a big list of objects that were already created, but are just deactivated. So for example, you can imagine this barrel in the scene. A pooling system would put it here at the start of the game when it loads and deactivate it. So functionally, it's not really there and it's not really interacting with the scene. But when the game is ready for a barrel and needs one, it'll activate it and put it wherever it needs to be put. So the idea is the same as instantiating where it's like you want something and you want it to pop up somewhere. Now on the ecosystem, there is a nice simple little pulling system that you can get. So if you hit Alt E or come over to Playmaker, Add-ons, Ecosystem, Ecosystem Browser, you bring up your Ecosystem Browser and just type in pool. Okay. and this package right here, pooler, is the one we want. I already have it, but for you, you would just hit the little button that says get on it. So this pooler package, when you have it, it'll give you a new action category, pooler. And in here you'll see pooler destroy pool, pooler destroy self, pooler destroy stored, pooler pool, and pooler spawn. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when you're using pooler actions to spawn game objects is actually create the pool from which you can draw. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an empty and I'll call this our pooler. I'm gonna add an FSM and I'm gonna put this pooler pool action in here. Pooler pool is the action that you can use to specify the game objects you wanna create. So for example, we'll use our barrel in here and we'll call the name of the pool barrels. And let's say at the top, we'll just leave this 20, so it'll create 20 barrels right when the game starts, right when this action runs, and we'll leave the rest of this alone. Okay, and I'm just gonna turn off this barrel spawner for now. So with this pooler selected, I'm gonna hit play, and you'll see over here in our hierarchy, all of these barrel clones, which got spawned, they're all deactivated. So if I just select one and activate it, there it is. Okay, and if I leave it alone, it'll still do its thing where it destroys itself. Okay, it's done like that. But that means it's still contributing to all that garbage allocation because it's still using destroy self. So if I press stop, 
and I go over to our barrel spawner. I'm gonna turn this back on. Now, instead of create object, we're gonna use pooler spawn. The name of the pool will be barrels. And this has to be spelled the same exact way that it is in our pooler pool action. And this spawn point, I'm just gonna drag the game object itself in there. Now, if I ran this right now, it'll pool from this list of game objects that our pooler created. But since our barrels are destroying itself, that kind of puts a kink in the system and it'll get stuck with that. So we actually don't want our barrel to destroy itself anymore. Instead, if I open up our barrel, we'll get rid of this destroy self action and we'll just give it a wait and say wait five seconds and it'll go to the next state where we'll have a pooler destroy self. And what this does is it deactivates the object and returns it to the available objects that can be pooled using the rest of these pooler actions. So here is wait and we'll call this like unpool. So now if I hit play, it's spawning all these. And you can see over here that every time a barrel is spawned, it just pulls from the available ones here. But after its little delay, instead of completely destroying itself, it just gets deactivated. So we're recycling through these same couple barrels instead of having to make and destroy new ones all the time. Not only is this good for your garbage collection allocation, but also for things that you don't need to keep in the world, like bullet holes, for example, that's a common one for people to put little bullet decals on walls or the ground or wherever. You don't need to see all the bullet holes you've shot the entire time you've been playing. And so very often programmers will use a pooling system for those and they'll get rid of the oldest ones or give them a little expiration date like these barrels. They'll just go away after a little while. So I'm gonna hit stop on here. Now to really drive home the power of pooling, what I'll do is come over to our barrel and I'm going to duplicate it. So now we have a copy of this game object as a child of itself. And in this first one, I'm just gonna get rid of these mesh renderer components and I'll keep the mesh collider and rigid body. Then on the child, I'm going to get rid of its collider and rigid body. Okay, so the parent game object has the collider and rigid body and then the child is the one that actually has the mesh that we can see. I'll remove the FSM as well. Okay, so now it's just the parent game object that has this. And what I wanna set up is a simple just interact to break it sort of thing. So what I'll do is first of all, take this weight and put it somewhere else for now. And in this one, delete this and add a interact event. Okay, this interact event is being used by the first person controller I have in the scene. So when I click on anything, it just sends an interact event to whatever it clicked. And since this game object has a mesh collider and this FSM, it will be receiving this interact event. For more on interacting with objects, see our tutorial. There is a link in the description. Okay, so I'm gonna have this interact event send off to a new state. We'll call this break barrel. And in here, we'll put in another pooler spawn. And the name of the pool we'll call planks. And the spawn point, I'm just gonna add in a empty object and we're gonna call this planks spawn. Okay, so I'll drag and drop there. And we're gonna store the object as last created plank. Then we're gonna do a float add and we'll call this 45 rotation. And it'll be adding 45 to it. And then a loop action which will loop, let's say six times. Okay, it's gonna have a loop event and a complete event. So what's happening here is it'll spawn a plank. Okay, I have this plank right here. We'll set that up in just a minute. It'll spawn a plank using pooler and then we'll have a set rotation action in here right after our float add. So this float add will add 45 to it and then we'll rotate our last spawn plank by this 45 degree rotation. Okay, and then it loops. And when it loops, it'll just come back to itself. So this state will loop. So the entirety of this, what will happen is it'll spawn the plank, add 45 to this little rotation float, and then set the rotation of this 
plank by whatever this degree is. So every single time it comes through here, the plank will rotate 45 more degrees than the previous one. So for each plank that gets created, it'll create a little nice fanned out spiral of planks for us. And we'll set this on self. Okay, and then when it's done, it'll come here, delete that, and put this pooler destroy self in here, okay? Barrel unpool. So first the barrel is just waiting here, then when we do interact with it, it breaks it by spawning all these planks, but also what we need to do is make sure that the barrel mesh itself goes away. So in the first state, I'm gonna have an activate game object and it's going to be the barrel. And in fact, let's call this the barrel mesh. So that's a little clearer. So on the first day, it's activating it. We don't want recursive on and let's have reset on exit. So whenever this barrel spawns, it will be activated, but then whenever we interact with it, it'll deactivate this mesh, right? So that goes away, but then a bunch of planks will spawn here instead. Now, the reason we want this activate game object on the first state is so that when, when it spawns a second or third or fourth, whatever time, our barrel mesh will be sure to be activated initially. Because if we put an action in here, activate game object that deactivates the barrel mesh, it won't get turned back on. That's why this activated game object has to go in the first state. Okay, so let's go back to our scene. Now this plank, by the way, it's just this plank that has a rigid body on it. And what I've done is added an FSM that waits five seconds and then has a pooler destroy self in it. Okay, so that's the setup for a single plank. Over here in pooler, we can add in another pooler pool. And this time we're gonna be spawning our plank, and let's say we'll spawn 50 of these, since there's gonna be a lot more than the barrels. Okay, we'll call these planks to match the same pooling action that our barrel has. So now if I hit play, I can click to interact with this barrel, and it destroys it and puts out a little spiral of planks. Okay, and you'll see that as I destroy all of these, I'm always pulling from the same planks that were just used a moment ago. And when you wait, you can see them just disappearing. So having this system is a way more performant way to go about spawning objects in the world. All right, and that's how you can use the pooler actions to make a way more performant system of spawning and despawning objects in your game. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.